Good morning, my friends, and welcome back to our Bible study. Today, we're going back to the book of Zechariah. And Zechariah, again, was one of the uh, prophets that ministered to Zerubbabel in, uh, in Jerusalem to help uh, rebuild the temple. Uh, I mentioned also yesterday that Zechariah could naturally be divided into uh, two divisions. One is chapters 1 through 8, and the second was 9 through 14. Yesterday, we hit a few highlights and some good principles that were in the first part of that. Today, we're going to look at the last half, chapters 9 to 14. And today, I also mentioned yesterday of how he was a um, messianic prophet, so to speak. He prophesied a, a lot of things or several places about the coming Messiah. And of course, he and Isaiah were um, were kind of, uh, well, Isaiah was a larger book, chap uh, 66 chapters, and of course, Isaiah is known as the Messianic prophet. But uh, we mentioned that other than Isaiah, it's probably the most Messianic uh, book that we have in the Old Testament. But I just want to throw out a, a few of these and show you uh, examples of the pointing towards the coming Messiah. Zechariah chapter 9, verse number 9, it says this, it says, um, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now this right here is a, a uh, pointing towards the uh, triumphal entry uh, in uh, Jerusalem. We can look at this in Matthew chapter 21, verse number 5. And then uh, over in, and by the way, let me just insert here. In the book of Matthew, uh, it's known, uh, Matthew is known as a promise and fulfillment uh, writer. He was writing to Jewish people, and so he was. He had a lot, not just from Zechariah, but he had from Jeremiah and Isaiah and other prophets of of um, uh, of, of a promise of a coming Messiah, and and, um, and 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 he was showing the fulfillment. So several of these scriptures I have today are found in Matthew, and um, we look also in chapter number eleven, verses twelve and thirteen, and it reads like this. Then I said to them. Um, if it, if it seems good to you, give me my wages, but if not, keep them. And they weighed out as my wages 30 pieces of silver. Then the Lord said to me, throw it to the potter, the lordly price at which I was priced by them. So I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord to the potter. And we look over in Matthew chapter 26, verse 15, we find uh, very similar of about the 30 pieces of silver in Judas. Um, but there's one, ver one chapter in Matthew chapter 27 I want to point out to you because some of you might read this and think there may be a discrepancy in the Word of God, but I just want to bring it out to you in chapter number 27, verse number 9. It says this, uh, in fact, let me back up to verse number 8. Therefore, that, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him who, uh, on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel. And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. When I read this, I, I thought, well, you know what? There seemed to be a discrepancy here because it wasn't Jeremiah that talked about the thirty pieces of silver. It was uh, it was Zechariah, and I, I thought about uh, Matthew writing this. Why did he write Jeremiah? Well, uh, in my research, I, I think I found the answer to that, that in, in that passage of Scripture, we have a portion of what Jeremiah said uh, about uh, the, the potter's field, and we also have a portion of what Zechariah said. And so when Matthew wrote it, he, he, wrote, the, uh, he wrote it and used Jeremiah. So it's, it's not a, a discrepancy. It's just that he included Jeremiah's words along with Zechariah's words. So we see here, and, and then we go on to chapter number 12, and the latter part of verse number 10. It says here, They will mourn for him as one uh, mourns for an only child, and weep, uh, weep bitterly over him as one who weeps over a firstborn. And we can find this over in uh, John chapter 19, verse number 37. And then finally in chapter 13, and I'm leading up to something here this morning, in chapter 13, verse number 7, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who stands next to me, declares the Lord of hosts. Strike the shepherd, and the shepherd will be scattered. 
I will turn my hand against the little ones. Uh, strike the shepherd and the shepherd will be scattered. Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. Jesus used this scripture. Jesus talked about this um, when, just before he was to be arrested. Uh, he was telling his disciples. So Jesus quoted this um, uh, from Zechariah. Now, uh, why am I sharing this with you this morning about these promise and fulfillment scriptures? Because uh, 500 years earlier, um, well, this was around 500 years before Jesus actually came on the scene. 700 years, Isaiah prophesied. A thousand years, uh, approximately, of course, a thousand years, we find uh, David in the Psalms talking about the coming Messiah. Here's my point this morning. When God promises something, and he did, he promised that we would have a Savior, a Messiah that was coming. When God promises, doesn't matter if it's 500, doesn't matter if it's 700, doesn't matter if it's 1,000, doesn't matter if it's 15, 2,000, or a, a million years. When he promises something, it will come to pass. And my friends, uh, if he promises you uh, something that you, you may not know, you know, our time frame, for us, we're thinking tomorrow, we're thinking next week, we're thinking uh, real soon, but when, when he promises, it's going to happen, and I, you can rest upon it. And friends, uh, I encourage you today, I don't know what he's promised you. I don't know what he's told you. You know, there's things in my life that I believe that God has for me, and he's promised me that I haven't seen come, come to pass yet. Uh, and, and I just keep clinging and holding on to that promise. And you have to do the same thing, because I can tell you, my friend, it came to pass uh, when the Zechariah, when Isaiah, when David and others in the Old Testament said that there was coming a Messiah, a shepherd that would would uh, look and, and bring the sheep back into the sheepfold, uh, that it came to pass in Jesus Christ. And I can promise you, my friends, that if you'll hold on to the promise, it may take a while, but if you'll hold on to the promise, it will come to pass. Let me pray for you today. Father, I thank you for our people that are watching uh, today. And Lord, I don't know what you've promised them. I don't know what you've spoken to them, God, but I know this, that if you said it, it's going to happen. And I want to thank you. I pray you'll give them strength for this day. And Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have an awesome day today. Bye-bye.